out for you. Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm not a part of the chosen frozen, but this is the church of the living God. God will work it out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just believe that somebody ought to have some anticipation of God working some mess out. Somebody need to draw a line in the sand. You've been going through hell too long. God's ready to work it out for you. Glory to God. Who is this man up here talking like this? Praise the Lord, everybody. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're going to make me preach up in here. I got my good clothes on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But won't he work it out? Oh, that thing is all in my kneecaps. Won't he work it out? Won't he turn your mourning into gladness? Won't he take hell and make it heaven? I'm telling you, won't he take a, a, a prostitute and make her a woman of God? He'll take a pimp and make him a preacher. Oh, Jesus. He'll work it out. I said he'll work it out. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He'll work it out. I'm not trying to be convinced about it. He will work it out. He has a track record of working things out. He ain't never lost a case. He ain't never lost a patient. He's worked out everything that he was supposed to work out. Okay, I'm going to preach right over you then. If you ain't going to get up and talk about him, he will work it out. Come on, somebody. Ah, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. The Greek call him the paraclete. The one caught alongside to help you, to upgird you, to lift you up. When you can't make it, the Holy Ghost just kicks in and says, son, I'll work it out. Yeah. Yeah. He'll work it out. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. If you are excited about being in this place, if you know that Jesus Christ is on the throne, Satan has been defeated, you are a child of God, you're not some misfit, you're not a nobody, but you are the righteousness of God. Positionally, he has set you in heavenly places. You ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I am Minister Mark Dorsey. For those of you who don't know who I am, uh, I like to scream real loud in the microphone and make whores work real hard. So, uh, But I, 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 get, I bring you greetings because I'm excited about this opportunity to stand before the people of God declaring the truth of his word. Somebody is ready for a breakthrough. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking just about, you know, you get in a house and you get in a car. But somebody's ready to walk in victory. Somebody's ready to live out what the word has been talking about. You tired of living in sin every day? You tired of struggling the way you struggling? You don't know why you can't get free. You don't know why this shackle is on your neck. Somebody's ready to break out. Somebody's been dealing with some mess all week long. And you're ready to break out of it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be before you long. I promise I'm not going to be before you long. I'm going to preach the word, hit it, and sit down. But in keeping in line with the theme of the month, pastors trying to inspire the men, trying to inspire us to wake up, be about our father's business. And it's only apropos that God would lead me to deal with the psychology behind why we end up in the situations we end up in. What takes place in the spirit realm? What takes place in our psyche that prevents us from walking in victory? Well, my friend, today we're going to deal with that. But let me first do my accolades. I have to give God honor because he is first and foremost the head of my life. Without him, I'm a clump of clothes and two shoes. But with God, all things are possible. We're going to deal with the psychology, the, the psychosis, you know, the studying of the mind. As to why we do what we do. How Satan ensnares you, traps you, captivates you. And what God has given you as a tool to get out. Somebody need to get out. 
So, so, somebody needs to get out. So my friend, if you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do. Oh, I feel the anointing. Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Paul is writing to the church of Corinth. If you don't know where second Corinthians is, it is directly after first Corinthians. Praise the Lord. Just trying to help you all out. Just those of y'all that didn't know that's, that's where it is. But Paul is writing to the church of Corinth. The church of Corinth has been in existence roughly over a year now. And he's already written his first letter and he's already dealt with things like marriage and that type of stuff. Now, in 2 Corinthians, some haters have stepped up on the scene and they are questioning the authority of Paul. Now, 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 instead of Paul putting his brass knuckles on and going Jewish style on them, you know, uh, he decides to break down this warfare that we are engaged in. And so we will pick up the theme of this letter in the third verse of chapter 10. Very familiar passage of scripture to you Bible scholars. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. I will reference the NIV, but sometimes good old King James just say it like it just, you need a thou and a thus every once in a while. You know, you know, amen. The thou hitherto, wait till we read some other stuff. Y'all gonna be like, oh my God, what is King James talking about? But verse number three, He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If you got a big red marker, mark that word stronghold because we're going to look at it again. He says, casting down imaginations. Notice that's a continual thing. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now jump with me over to James, the book of James, the first chapter. And we're going to tie all this stuff together. James, the first chapter. If you get the chance, read this chapter right here because... It explains you as a man, as a woman. It breaks down your intention. It, you, you, God didn't do it. The devil didn't do it. It explains who the person is behind all the stuff we end up to end up in, you know. Uh, but we will pick up at verse number 18. James chapter 1, verse number 18. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, say hold on. Okay. Oh, bless the hold owners. We got some hold owners in the in the room. He says, of his own will begat he us, he being God, uh, with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now jump down to verse number 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, now watch this, y'all, and superfluity of naughtiness. That just sound bad, don't it? Or the abundance of evil, what the NIV says. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. I like how the NIV says that. Or humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't fix your problem already. I ain't even preached yet. That verse right there just fixes your problem right there. Today, my friend, we're going to talk about I'm trapped but I want to get out. I'm trapped, but I want to get out. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your anointing that is evident in this place. We thank you for your presence, the spirit of liberty that sets us free. We thank you, Lord God, that the wounded, the brokenhearted, they're going to be healed today. We thank you, Father, for your presence because it is going to proclaim demonstratively, Lord, that you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Father, I pray that your anointing be on me, God, so preaching can be easy. God, I'm a vessel in your hands to be used for your glory. I pray for the hearers in this place even now that they would receive the word with gladness and act upon it. 
Now, Satan, let me tell you something right now. We give you charge. You have to go. It is not an option. We are not asking you, but we are commanding you by the name of Jesus, the authority of the Son of God. You have to go and all of your imps with you. And God, I pray that if any don't know you yet, that after your word has gone forth, that they would run down the aisle with great fervor, crying out, what must I do to be saved? God, we will give you praise for all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm trapped, but I want to get out. I, I, I found myself in a jam. I find myself in a situation, a predicament, and I really don't know how to get out. Really, uh, uh, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you I don't even know how I got there, but we won't even go into that. But... I'm trapped in a circumstance. I'm trapped in a situation. I'm trapped in a relationship. I'm trapped. uh, uh, My job is trapping me. Uh, There's so many things that I find myself being trapped by. But more importantly, there's some sin that's trapping me. It's got me captivated. It's got me entangled. Has me wrapped up. I don't know how to get free. When I would do good. Evil. Evil. Is always present. Oh, this is going to be a sit down. I'm listening to you preach your message on y'all. But, but, but I'm trapped in a circumstance, a situation, or a predicament that I cannot get free from. Now, many individuals have found themselves trapped in circumstance. You know, we ain't the first group that's found ourselves trapped in problems. But men of God as well in scripture have found themselves trapped in circumstance, situations, or predicaments. Uh, One that comes to mind, Daniel found himself in a lion's den. He had to use the manes of lions for his bed pillows. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found themselves in a fiery furnace because they would not bow to King Nebuchadnezzar. Look Nebuchadnezzar up in in, in your concordance and you'll find out what that story is about. But they would not bow to King Nebuchadnezzar, so he threw them into a fiery furnace. And because of that, they were trapped. Now, let me just interject something for somebody that's going through right now. Every situation you go through is not always a result of negative influence. I just gave you somewhere to shout right there. God is moving you. Some, somebody in here, God is positioning you. He has put you in a place of pressure because he's trying to get some stuff in and he's trying to get some stuff out. You you, you need to stay right there. You don't need to move. You need to stay right there so God can perfect you. He wants to turn you into pure gold and present you to the world. I I, I, I can prove it to you. I can prove it to you. Pastor said he got word on the side, but I'm going to say I can prove it to you. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You know what that word led means? Brought or presented. God said, I'm going to present my son to you, Satan. And see, God wants you to stay right where you are, some of y'all. He wants you to stay right where you are because otherwise, if you move, you're talking about a mess. You're going to be an unfinished product. And you know what happened when unfinished products get in the hands of consumers? Manufacture defect. Got to send it back. So God said, don't move. Stay right there. Stay in the spirit because what I'm doing in you, I'm perfecting you. Now, 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 everybody's not Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, There are some Jonas in the house. Uh, I was a Jonah at one time. And and, and, and there's some Jonas, there's some previous Jonas in the house right now. Uh, You ran away from what God told you to do. Your own agenda took precedent. You decided you were going to do the thing you wanted to do. You were going to do it how you wanted to do it, when you wanted to do it, because that's just who I am. You know, my mama made me that way. I'm going to do it the way I want to. And so Jonah, because of his own agenda, because of his own desire, decided to run from God. Let me tell you something if you don't know. I don't care if you you board a plane, a train, or an automobile. You cannot run from the call of God. That's just a sidebar. I gave you that one for free. But understand this, my friend, that Jonah 
decided he was going to get on a ship. You know, the old song said Jonah decided which way he would go. Said he boarded the ship and went down below. The ship began to rock from side to side. Said everybody there was troubled in mind. Said they searched the ship down in the deep. Found the Hebrew boy fast asleep. Said, wake up, Hebrew, what's your name? Oh, said, my name is Jonah. I'm fleeing from the king. Said, all of this trouble on account of me. Throw me overboard and let the ship go free. God said, I'm not going to let you do your own thing. Jonah tried to do it on his own. Tried to use his own agenda. But God said, no. Now, some of us are like Jonah. We've tried to do it our own way. We've tried to use our own desire. We, 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 we've decided uh, it, it is appealing to our appetite. James said that let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. God can't be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. See, some of us, our, our own desire got us where some of us are. Not all of us, you know, not, not the folk in this section. But, but our own desire has gotten us into some situations. And, Lord, why, 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 why you do this, Jesus? Uh, Lord, I mean, what, what, why I'm going through this? And it, it's them big, broad shoulders that then got you in the mess you in. The, the, you know, the, the, the hair. It, it ain't even got to be hers, as long as it looks long and nice. You know, it, 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 it's appealing to us. There are some things that appeal to our flesh, and we like those things. You know what, James, if you read, if you read that passage I just quoted in the Amplified, this is going to really bless you because when I saw this, I felt like a big heel. The Amplified breaks it down like this. He says, every man is tempted. He sees the bait that it takes to ensnare him. He knows what it takes to ensnare him. He sees the trap over there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And he takes this bait that he knows will snare him. Because, you know, you ain't going to like nothing that you, you know, only the thing that you like got to walk by for you to pay attention to it. If I don't like it, I ain't looking at it. So, so the bait that will snare me, James says, you put it in the trap. You're drawn away of your own lust and entice. So you put your bait down in the trap and then you walk over to it. What's that doing sitting there? Uh, I wonder how that got there. Well, maybe, you know, that's how animals do, but I ain't calling y'all animals. I, I'm not, but, 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 but you see that bait, you put it there because you would not arrest the thoughts in your mind. You put it there and then you take it. Then your hand get trapped. Oh God, I'm being afflicted by the devil. My friend, you are not being afflicted by the devil. Let me give you warn. Let me give you warning. Let me news flash, news flash, news flash. You drove to the house. You didn't just trans. You, you weren't transformed to the house. You, you, you know, uh, uh, uh. You had to make the reservation. Please don't throw nothing at me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You had to make the reservation. You had to buy the wine. <laughs> it wasn't free. You just didn't wake up in some Jeep. Poop. You in a hotel. Silk roll bone. You know. Rose petals. We love each other, so I guess it's okay. But my friend, let me tell you something. Before before you start feeling bad in yourself like I'm like I'm like I'm knocking you and all that stuff. We all have our own struggles, but, but let me, let me just tell you something before you go into some pity party about your situation. You are not doing that all by yourself. You have an enemy and his name is Satan. He is a strategist and his prime motivation is to find a crack in your armor. What he wants to do is he wants to bring destruction to your life. And if you allow him, he will watch sin be formed in you. James said, when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it's finished, it's bringing death. What does that mean? When sin turned 18 and asked for the keys to the car, he's coming with death. He wants to destroy you. You're not by yourself in this. There's a strategist called the devil. Ephesians 6 says, the wiles of the devil. Talks about putting on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what the word wiles means? The strategies, the schemes 
the schemes of the penetrating one. You know, that's what the devil means in the Greek, Diablos. He is the penetrating one. So he's coming with schemes and strategies trying to penetrate your armor. So Satan is trying to captivate you. He's trying to arrest you. He's trying to bring you into subjection. He is trying to get you to buy into the mess he's selling. Well, I don't see him selling me no mess. You know, you know, the Bible says that when we see him, we will say, is this the one that has deceived the nations? I mean, when you see him, you're going to want to jack smack him because, you know, Hollywood and, and, and he's been responsible for this. You know, if you watch the History Channel, you see how Germany did propaganda, you know, them folk. Uh, uh, American soldiers are sitting up there in Moscow and they talking about, we are defeating the Americans. You know, I mean, I mean, propaganda is basically, I'm going to paint you a picture and you're going to buy into it. Why do you think we see Satan with big horns and, and pitchforks and stuff and he's red? Let me tell you something, y'all. He's an angel. He's a fallen angel. And guess what? Guess what else about it? If you, if you look at, and I'm not going to get real deep on it, but if you look at the role that Lucifer had in the beginning, he was the usherer of praise into God's bedchamber. The Bible says that he would bring the praises of the angels into the bedchamber of God. And when he would step out, they would see the glory of God all over him. Us married folk know what that feel like after, you know, you've been, you know, together with your mate. And there's that glow on you. You know, you have that glow. I'm talking to the married folk. You know, you know, you got that glow, you know, uh, uh, is it oil sheen glow is one of them, you know, one of them hair products that give you a glow. But, but, but Lucifer would walk into the presence of God at soul glow. Yeah. See, he had soul glow. See, he had soul glow. And so he would walk into the presence of God and come out with God's glory on him. He was God's wife because that's what we do. The Bible says that we are the worshipers. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He called us lively stones. What do lively stones do? They glow because of God's presence. Yeah, I'm going to him with this. See, Satan, when he fell, he got perverted. He got polluted. So what was pure love became perverted love. Ergo, homosexuality. Oh, I just gave you revelation right there. See, see, you want to know why it's so rampant in the body of Christ? Because the progenitor of it, the person who is orchestrating it is a sissy. Satan ain't nothing but a sissy. He's a lover gone bad. Okay. We're not supposed to use that word, Rev. We can't use sissy in the pulpit. I'm sorry. So the only thing Satan can do is introduce thoughts. That's his primary job. If you look at his job description, if he handed you his resume, he'd be a thought introducer. All that other stuff, he got Steven Spielberg and them guys and poacher guys, you know, uh, he's here. All that stuff that, well, you scared to go to bed at night because you think some big old demon in your room. Don't you know you're a child of God? Don't you know the God that created the universe lives on the inside of you? I wish some fool demon would walk in my house. He'd have hell to pay. I'd run a revival all up and down his back. Uh, Jesus. Woo. Glory. So he introduces thoughts. You know, he's an insurance salesman. Ain't a bank in the universe that would take his policies. He's selling crap that ain't nobody going to cash in. Yeah, I, I got proof. I got proof. I got some more proof. I got some more proof. Uh, 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 Eve. Y'all, y'all remember Eve? Eve's in the garden to show you his operation, to show you how he works. And we're still talking about brothers. Because y'all usually make the reservation. Well, sometimes the brother ain't got no job, then the girl got to put it on her credit card. But, but anyway, I, I'm talking to the brothers, but the women going to be blessed. So, so, so in the garden, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how Satan works. In the garden, he seduces Eve. You know, before the fall, the serpent wor- walked upright. That was a curse that God gave him to slide along his belly. I know a little Bible. And, 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 and so uh, God cursed the serpent. But before that, 
you know, he probably had wingtip shoes on, some Stacy Adams and a gold tooth. You know, when he was walking around in the garden, you know, trying to seduce Eve, you know, swaggering and stuff. You know, I mean, he had to be sharp. You know, I mean, he, you know, he just walking and stuff. You know, hey, baby, what's going on? You know, and he trying to get in. You know, where you be at, you know, things that make you smile. What numbers to die? You know, that kind of thing. You know, he was, you know, I mean, he was trying to get in, you know, be smooth. You know, soul glow. You know, he coming with the soul glow. And so I'm about to preach in a minute, y'all, for real. I'm going to preach my throat out. But so what, 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 what he does to Eve, he introduces ideology, a group of ideas. That, that try to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. So, so uh, let me just say this. It's going to bless somebody. Women, men, stop talking to snakes with shiny shoes on. Uh, uh, it's going to be bad for you. Read the story of Eve. She messed all us up. I mean, when I see her in heaven, I'm a hugger, but I think I'm a puncher first. You know, because Adam too, you know, women's lib is in here. Adam too, Adam was wrong. He was wrong. I'm not saying he wasn't wrong. You know, but he was, he was creeping, you know, on the down low. And so, and so what he did, he introduced ideals to Eve. You won't surely die. He polluted the word of God. He corrupted it. Now, because he is an introducer of thoughts, he needs some participation. God gave you the ability to choose. If somebody ain't looking at me, I'm going to stare at you and preach at you until you look at me. God gave you the ability to choose. If I see you drop your head down, I'm going to stare right over in your section. Because God gave you the ability to choose, Satan needs your help. Paul talked about thoughts, imaginations, high things. Let's deal with imaginations for a moment. Because Satan introduces thought patterns to you. I mean, he got a machine gun of thoughts. I mean, he'll spray thoughts at you all day. Your head will be ringing by the time he get done. And don't let the woman you like be working in the same office with you. Lord Jesus, your head will be melting. You'll be walking home time. I just want to get to church. Well, what's going on at church? I don't know. They're setting up the baptism pool. I don't even care. I just need to be in the building. Because he will shoot so many thoughts at you. But guess what? Guess what? God set it up. That that ain't enough for him. He still can't defeat you with that. You know, how the old folks said, I think we got enough folks in here to know that. You, can, you can't keep birds from flying over your head. But you can show keep them from nesting. And because of that premise, because of that ideal, you still have a part to play in your captivation. That's why James said you put your own bait down. Because you have to accept those thoughts. You have to accept those thoughts. And guess what thoughts become? I'm about to give y'all something free now. Thoughts become imaginations. An imagination is nothing more than a system of thoughts put together. You can write this one down. An imagination is nothing more than a system of thoughts to produce one thing. He presents so many thoughts to you. To where you become so overwhelmed because you have not been prayed up, because you have not been in the spirit, that all of a sudden it's like a dam that breaks and all this water starts gushing in. Your mind is so overloaded with the ideal of Satan to you become captivated by an imagination. You know, the Greek word for imagination is logomos. I'm going to be deep today. It means, check this definition out. It blew my mind when I heard this. It means the contemplation of actions, premeditated, the contemplation of actions as a result of the verdict of the conscious. You've been thinking about it. It ain't spontaneous. Paul said that we are children of the light. The dark day won't overtake us. Newsflash, uh, Christians don't accidentally end up in sin. Let me just tell you all that right now. Let me tell you that right now. I know you thought it. You know, I know you thought you just tripped in the bed. But, 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 but because God put his spirit on the inside of you that would lead you and guide you into all truth. There might be a moment, there might be five minutes, but you made a decision. 
The word for imagination says it's a verdict of the conscious. There's been a hearing that the, the, the council has come together. The big brain and the little brain have had a meeting. And it's been decided upon. This is what we're going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Lord. If the walls had ears. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to say thank you, Jesus, for a little while. Let it, let it simmer down. You know, sometimes your bread arrives and you just got to, like, open the oven so it'll just you know, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. But the imagination that is set up in you, I'm going to bless you right here. The serpent is found in scripture seducing Eve. He goes, he goes, he's, I mean, pimp talk, you know, juice. He got the, what is it wrong? You, you got pimp juice. I mean, he coming, he coming heavy. I mean, he's talking mad game. All of a sudden, Eve buys into the ideology of Satan. I will give somebody a Subway sandwich if they show me where Satan shows up again in that passage. The moment you buy into the convincing ideal of Satan, he no longer needs to influence you. Because of how God created you, you take, you say, give me that remote control, devil. i watch this myself. And you hit rewind. You hit fast forward. Some of us just hit pause and stare at it. Oh, I ain't doing nothing. I was just thinking about you. You know, that's all I was doing. Oh, you want me to come over? Well, yeah, we just going to watch a movie. Satan is not mentioned after that until God curses him. Because Eve bought into it. He don't got to present nothing no more. He don't got to present. He ain't got to present nothing no more. Because you've already accepted it. You have already eaten it. You have become the producer, the director, and the star of your own movie. I think we need to do a double take on that last scene because we just didn't get our angles right. I hope I'm blessing somebody in here today because we're about to get to hope and victory in a second. But, but before you can get out of something, you, you got to know how you got in it. So, so. So Satan, he introduces thoughts. And, 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 and what imaginations are intended to do is develop strongholds in your life. Stronghold. A fortified place. A place of imprisonment. A place to captivate you. A place to keep you under. He talks about uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. The stronghold that Satan wants to present to you, wants set up in your life, it is intended to produce sin. And sin's intent is to produce death. That's why Paul said, I don't want you ignorant concerning how Satan comes against you. Y'all heard the, 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 the saying before? It's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. You fight in a battle and you don't even know how your enemy operates against you. You keep wanting somebody to lay hands on you and you got to arrest your thoughts. Thank you, Jesus. So if you don't understand how your foe works against you, he will defeat you. So my friend, understand this. That his agenda has not changed, being Satan. That's why Paul said, high things that would exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. You know, in the beginning, Satan said, I'm going to exalt myself to be as the most high. His agenda ain't changed. He just ain't got the clout in heaven he used to have. They didn't, didn't, you know, denied his credit card. So he can't get in no more. But now look at what he has to work with. He has mankind to sell his ideology, his reasonings, his thoughts to. And if you will allow him. He will captivate you with the mess he's selling. God said you're the head. Satan says you're the tail. God says you ought to be lending. Satan says you need to borrow that. 
God says, you're my righteousness. Oh, Lord, I'm so weak and I don't know what to do. And God is sitting up on his throne with his head resting on his shoulder. I gave him my authority. I gave him my anointing. My son died for him. I've given him everything that pertained to life and godliness. And he over there in the corner having a pity party. I tell you something that, 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 that'll bless you. Did you. Y'all ever see the Godfather? I think it was Godfather too. You, you know, you can learn covenantal truth from the Godfather. Because that's all about covenant. You know, uh, Don Corleone is sitting at his desk at a wedding. At, I think it's a daughter's wedding or somebody like that. It was a wedding going on. And Vito comes into his office crying. I wish I had some cotton in my mouth. I could act like him. But, but he comes into Don Corleone's office crying. Now, this is the son of the Dom of the Godfathers. There's nobody higher than Don Corleone. And Vito, his son, same blood, comes into his room crying. So Don Corleone looks at him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wish I had some cotton. You come into my house and insult me like this. He felt insulted. You are my bloodline. All of my power is yours. Everything I have is yours. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He knew everything God had was his. He said, I don't, you don't take my life. I lay it down. Because if I wanted to, I'd set this off. I'd set it off up in here. Legions of angels would come down and deliver me. Don't you know I'm God? So, so he says, you insult me like this. I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. All you've got to do is speak my word. But you keep having a pity party. Ah. You know why you have so much authority, my friend? Because even though Satan has gotten very good at captivating people. I mean, he's, he's pretty much an expert. I mean, he's got his certification in captivation. I mean, he, he's pretty much got a handle on how to seduce you. That's why, and I'm really about to bless some folk and hear a little Burger King. That's why you can be up at night watching your favorite movie. And then all of a sudden you see flame broiled whoppers and sesame seed buns and milkshakes and, 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 and onion rings with the onion ring sauce. And it's like 2 o'clock in the morning and they play that commercial about 30 times. Next day you're just driving along. You know, you're going to pick your son up from basketball practice. And your peripheral sees burger. And old women are diving for their lives. Dogs are taking cover under sewer holes because you have now made a beeline to Burger King because the media has, has figured out that if I push it to them long enough, they'll bite. Where do you think they got that from? From that jive turkey, the devil. Because that's how y'all get them credit cards. Thank you, Jesus. So, so. But check this out. Check this out. Check this out. And I'm about, to, I'm about to close. I'm about to close. But Satan is excellent at his trade. He is excellent at introducing thoughts. But, oh, we got a trump card on him. We got, a, we got an ace in our back pocket. See, he didn't originate it. He didn't originate the concept of captivation. That's why I read James for you when I said of his own will begat he us through the word of truth. That word begat is a continual state of beginning. What that means is that one day you heard the word, the next day you heard the word, all of a sudden you heard this love story about Jesus. You driving down your street and, and, and all of a sudden conviction rose up in your heart. What you think God was doing? He was seducing you with his son. Uh, he began to woo you. That's why one time you heard me say, I'm in love with a man and I ain't a fag. Because I begin to hear the story of Jesus. All of a sudden, I begin to fall in love with this man. I heard about how he died for me. God originated the concept of seducing somebody. It was God. I mean, where would Satan have gotten his practice from? He's trying it in the garden. I mean, he ain't had nobody else to practice on. 
he had to steal it from God, a little special chest of goodies, you know. I mean, he had to go before God kicked him out. He had to, I'm going to take this little captivation thing right here because I think I'm going to need that because my day up here is done. He had to steal it from God. The Greeks called God, uh, Plato's and all those other philo- uh, uh, philosophers, when they were looking up into the cosmos. They could not they could not accept this concept that the Greek uh, uh, society had came up with all these various gods. The Greeks like Plato's and those type of men said there has to be a supreme being. And when they looked at the structure and the order of the universe, some of them called him the thinker or the original thought. Meaning that before one T was crossed and before one I was dotted, there was a thinker thinking it. So because he originated thoughts, he must know how to use them. Now, let's get out of the mess that I just put y'all in. Thank you, Jesus. Now, because God originated thoughts, because God is a person that orchestrated the whole process on how your mind works. He says, "My, he, I, I can remember. I, I mean, I was deep in sin. I, I walked away from God. I told you I was Jonah before. I don't know if I told you that, but I was. I was Jonah. I ran away from God. And one day I'm in a nightclub with my, with my drink of choice. You know, when you're a sophisticated Negro, you got to have a drink of choice. You just can't be ordering everything in the bar. And so, and so I had my drink of choice, and all of a sudden the spirit, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably wasted. Now, I know y'all say when you get drunk, you start thinking all kinds of stuff, but this was the Holy Ghost. I know it was. I know it was. I know it was. The spirit said, son, he said, the same process used to get you where you are is the same process that will get you out of that mess. Let, 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 let's, let, let's, let's go to the close now. Romans 12, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God, will, will he has given us a resource in the word that if you apply the word, my friend, the way God intended it, you will walk in victory. Even though Satan has polluted the process that God has designed to bless you and that now you, you, you now find yourself captivated and hung up in sin, my friend, if you take the word of God, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law and in his law doth he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. He said, take my word in you. Take my word in you, my son. The same process used to captivate you. The same process used to bring you under. That same method will bring you out. There are four four ways to get out of the mess you in. Four ways to get out of the mess you in. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. James says, if you humbly accept the word that has been planted in you. First, you got to admit where you are. You got to be humble about your situation. Man, I used to lie like a carpet. Oh, he's so open because I'm delivered now. So I ain't got no problem with, with sharing my scars with you. I did bleed at one time, but you know, uh, uh, yeah, that's the ticket. You know, uh, I, I, t- I could lie like my mama would look at me and be like, boy, you just on your way to hell. But the first thing you've got to do is admit where you are. You have to humbly accept the word. You don't know it all. You ain't figured it out. Even though you got a concordance in your Bible, don't mean you know everything you need to know. Because if you did, you wouldn't keep making them reservations. So you've got to humbly accept the word. Please shake my hand after this is over. I I, I am y'all friend. But this message blessed me more than it blessed anybody. You've got to humbly accept the word of God that has been planted in you. Now, that word plant is significant because God's word is a seed. And if you allow God's word to grow in you, if it germinates, it will produce the fruit of the spirit. It's a continual process. There are four things you have to do. You have to read the word. You have to hear the word. You have to speak the word. And you have to meditate on the word. My friend, I give you an ironclad promise from the father. If you take those steps and use them, you will walk in victory. It is it not. It's impossible not to. It's impossible not to. Psalm said he shall be. He shall be. 
shall is an absolute no variableness. Nothing else but this can happen. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water. Okay. Take these four things. Use this tool that God has given you called his word. If you use it, my friend, I got the cure for the homosexual. I've got the cure for the prostitute. I've got the cure for the person with low self-esteem. I've got the cure for the person with depression. I'm telling you, I've got the cure for them. Take the word. Put it on the inside of you. Allow his word to get down. It will change your situation. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers, let me speak to you. Let me speak to you. Satan has a plan to destroy you. Jesus, because he was in the spirit, he saw from afar. You know how you parents can see trouble? Your kids be playing out in the street and you see that bad little boy coming and you call your son or your daughter, come on in the house. You know, Johnny dropped out of the fourth grade. Come on. You know, he, he, he out there selling that stuff. Come on. And Jesus being the shepherd that he is, he gave Peter a tip. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. You know what sifting does? It tears apart the wheat. That's what sifting does. It takes the shaft and the, and the meat of the, of, the, of the plant and it tears it apart. That's what he is desiring to do to destroy you. But my friend, you have hope. You are not helpless. The same process used to get you in that affair. The same process used when you're hung up on gambling. That process, take the word. Apply it the same way. It'll change your situation. I'm living proof. I was drinking, gambling, all kinds of stuff. Now I'm back in the pulpit because of God's word. You ought to give God praise. God's trying to help you in your situation. He's trying to help you in your situation, men. He's trying to change that mess in your life. You crying, having a pity party, going to sleep at night, crying yourself to sleep. But God said, get my word in you. And we'll take this neighborhood. We'll take this community. We'll take this city. We'll take this state. We'll take this country. And it will all say, in the glory of the Father, we did all this. We did it because Jesus is on the throne. I think this is blessing somebody. If you don't get the word on the inside of you, this process of captivation, introduction of thoughts, the establishment of imaginations, the binding of the strong man, and then sin, ultimately death, that process will run its course. It's just like faith taken in the word. I, I think it'll help you if you understand that, that Satan's kingdom is only a direct opposite of God's kingdom. Hate, love, faith, fear. I mean, if you, if you mirror what Satan does, it is exactly what God does only in reverse. Why reinvent the wheel if you got Jehovah giving you tips on how to do stuff? Come on, y'all. He's not reinventing the wheel. God does the same thing to you. Only difference is sometimes God, God's stuff ain't sweet. It ain't soft. You don't wear three-inch heels. Sometimes God's stuff come hard at you because God sees your future. For I know the plan that my father has for me to prosper me, give me hope and a future. God sees your future. So because God sees your future, no, you're going to eat carrots. I know you want candy bars, but you're going to eat carrots. Then when you're done, you can have some pudding. He's not going to feed you candy bars all the time. Oh, but Satan, your teeth will rot out of your face. Satan will let your teeth rot right out of your face. Oh, yeah, baby. You're going to be so big and strong, Hercules. You're going to be so strong. Eat all these candy bars. Eat all the hamburgers you want. 
He's using the same process God used. The exact same process. The only thing is he wants to destroy you. You know why? Because he hates you. It ain't personal. You know what it is? He can't stand God. He can't stand God. He has a vehement hate for God. He is passionate about his hate for God. And secondly, he ain't about to let another Jesus walk up in here. Because they still got egg on their face in hell because of that fiasco. So he can't stand you because of God. So he's going to shoot fire at you to destroy you. Ah, uh, but take the shield of faith. Take the sword of the spirit. Your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation. My friend, he has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everybody up on their feet. He has given you all things that pertain up to life and godliness. All you've got to do is accept the word. Somebody in here is tired of being the puppet for the devil. They're tired of being the puppet for the devil. Tired of falling in the same old mess, the same old situation, the same old problem, over and over and over again. Sick of it. Tears streaming down your face as you do it. Because you know God's got something better for you. But you feel so caught up, you feel so overwhelmed. You feel like there's nothing you can do about it. It's so heavy on you. When you come to church, it's like a breath of fresh air because you feel like you won't have to deal with that mess in your head. You know as soon as you get out of the doors, it's going to be right back. He's going to be calling your phone. Probably left two messages on there already. God says there's hope. God says, take my word. But it starts as accepting my son as Lord and Savior. It starts with accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Somebody needs to re-accept him. Somebody's got broken fellowship in this place. Somebody needs to reaffirm their relationship with Jesus. You need to let God know. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? Are we the same? Are you sure? The one thing that I am sure of is that we are all beautiful children of God with a divine power deeply rooted within us.